Hey there, welcome to the stream. How's everybody doing tonight? Good to see everybody this evening. Please let me know if you can hear the music in the background. My, um, my spectrometer here is not showing that it's registering any music in the background. I want to make sure you guys will be able to hear the audio tonight. Hey Danny, how's it going? good to see you. Hope you had a good day. I don't hear music at the moment. I'm okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Let me see if I can fix that. I know it was working earlier. There we go. That fixed it. All right. Thanks for helping me troubleshoot that. Always weird weirdness that happens. All right. So, I've lost track of what this is. Four, five... Fourth or fifth stream for Wizardry Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord Remake. Um, just a brief introduction for anyone who watches a replay here. Wizardry is one of my favorite games of all time. I've played it since I was, oh, a little kid, 10 or 11 years old. Uh, played every one I could possibly get my hands on. But the first one, of course, has a special place in my heart. Um, just... It's been a favorite of mine since I, I think I encountered it first in 89, 90, something like that. Um, so we're checking out this new remake, um, which is essentially the original Apple II game at its core with a bunch of nice window dressing on top of it. And last night, we explored a majority of the third uh, dungeon of the game. A third floor of the dungeon, I should say. me and um, actually wiped the entire party um, one room had three groups of ninjas in it now we actually managed to survive that fight but barely I think there was two characters left at the end of that fight and what happened with those characters is they were poisoned and so we tried the best we could do to get them back to town but they died I don't know mere steps from the the entrance to the town all six characters dead in the maze so what we did last night is we made a new character um, a single new character named EMT and we sent him into the maze to pick up the bodies of the fallen adventurers and bring them back to town and we were able to do that successfully so when we ended the night what we had was six dead adventurers in the town temple and no money to resurrect them so what I've done this afternoon is grinded away and got enough money to resurrect everybody and so when we start the game here in a moment all of the characters will once again be alive but they'll be very weak so we're gonna have to do a lot of healing we have to do a lot of uh, hanging out at the inn to make this uh, happen um, and then we're going to take one last peek down at level 3 and see if we figured everything out. I think we've mapped 95% of it at this point. And that's kind of where we're at. So let's go ahead, and without further ado, we will jump right in to the game. Hmm. 
All right, so here we are. So there's Kyler, barely alive. We'll go to the tavern. We're going to add the other characters. Now, one thing I think I want to do here, I want to talk about Brundorf for a minute. When I created Brundorf, I had intended to create a dwarf character, but I think from where I was busy talking and um, discussing everything that was going on in the game, I messed up. Because when I look at Brundorf here, he's actually an elf. He's not a dwarf. And silly as that may be, it's killing me that Brundorf has a dwarf name and a dwarf picture, but he's an elf. So I think we're going to change his name here. Let's see. What sounds like Brun? What would Brundorf sound like in Elvish? Hmm. And he is our samurai. Hmm. Brunelos. Yeah, we'll do that. And we'll make him an elf portrait. You know, I've already got an elf a male. So let's make Brunelos a female. Brunelita. There we go. Now we have a proper good elf samurai. Since the other samurais we encountered in the maze were female also, it all works out well. Now I notice here that Wilma needs to level up, so let's go to the inn. In fact, let's everybody just stay at the stables for once. I want to see... Oh, Wilma, what do we got here? Alright, so we've maxed her out there. Shorty and Merlin. I don't remember if we had anything we needed to sell. Sell that dagger. So you notice I want I want to talk about something here. You notice there's some things missing, right? Where's Brunelita's sword? Where's Kyler's sword? Where's Frodet shorts? Uh, where's Frodet's um? shield. Where's her armor? Where's his armor? Where? So items are missing. The reason that items are missing is because these characters laid dead in the maze. And when you're dead in the maze, monsters will loot your body. So not only did we have to raise the money to resurrect them. But now, we've got to re-equip them. And some of these guys had some good stuff, too. I think Kyler had a uh, longsword plus one, right? We had um, breastplates and, and leather armor plus one, and it's all, all gone. It's all gone. So, we are going to buy Brunelita a longsword. Kyler needs a longsword. Frodet needs a shield. Can we? We can't really afford that, can we? Wilma needs. See, see, see. It's so bad. We need some armor. We need some stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think Frodet needs anything, something more than the people in the back. So bad stuff when you when you wipe and you leave the characters in the maze for any length of time, they're going to get looted. They're going to lose their stuff. So first things first, we need to heal. This is a cool spell. I want to show you this too. We from where uh, Wilma leveled up, she got some new spells. Dalma, this is a big big cure spell, and of course there's the uh, opposite of it. Condi is a neat spell because if there are characters dead in the maze like we just were just talking about, Condi will show you where they are. And Bad Eye, 
supposedly has the ability to kill one single monster. It doesn't always work. But for right now, let's do some big curing. Eh, it could have been better, in my opinion. Now, Shorty has the ability to cure as well. And it's going to take a minute to cure these people up. We suffered some serious trauma. I knew when we started that fight that that was going to be trouble. Again, the encounter was three groups of ninjas in one battle. Right, let's keep this going. Boy, that big cure spell isn't really impressing me much. The die rolls just aren't with me today. There we go, that was a good one. So welcome to the stream. Thanks for watching. We're playing Wizardry Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord, the remake. And what I was just saying earlier is last night we had quite an adventure. We were mapping the third level when we had a full party wipe. All six characters died in the maze. So we had to create a new character to go down and retrieve them. Finally, everybody's resurrected. But in the meantime, from where they were laying dead in the maze, monsters looted their corpses and lost, they lost most of their weapons. So I've bought some very rudimentary weapons just so they can defend themselves. But I think before we continue down to the third level and finish our map there, we are going to farm some gold pieces just a little bit, just so we can kind of get everybody equipped. Because some of these people in the back row here They have no armor. But Murphy's Ghost... Oh, is that not Murphy's Ghost? Oh, did I go through the wrong door? I sure did. Well, any fight we fight will earn us some gold pieces. Let's see how they do with these cheap weapons. We should still mow right through just about everything. Or not. See, Frodeck's taking some major damage without that shield. Those long sword plus ones, they were nice, but they are gone now. And I spent all of our gold on resurrection. So I cannot just go and buy new ones. But we're getting there, see? Alright, so where are we really? We're stuck in this loop here. There's Murphy's Ghost, so let's do a couple fights with him, 
just to earn some gold, because I believe his gold drops are pretty, pretty good. I love this model. One of the few unique uh, models in the game. So what do we have here? What can we do? We'll lower his armor class a bit. Let's check out some of these new spells here. He's so hard to hit. That's why I want to um, give him a huge AC penalty. Love that animation right there. Let's see if magic will do much for him. Hmm? Oh, no, not a, not a, um, uh, let's do a, yeah, let's see what that does. Usually spells and Murphy's Ghost don't always work together very well. Now he's got a seven AC penalty. He's way easier to hit now, as, as we can see. So we've almost beat him, and when we fought him for the first time, these, I think we're getting up to around 20, 22, 23, because it was just, he misses us, we miss him. It's a very stale, stale fight. Let's see what kind of gold we got off of that. Not much, honestly. I didn't mean to execute that again. spell did we use last time? Still missing, though.
Let me see where I always get turned around in here. Okay, so. Hey there, welcome to the stream. If you have any questions, just feel free to drop it in the chat. I will be happy to answer. What we are doing now is trying to just earn a little money because all of the characters we wiped last night, we had a full party wipe, and the characters lie dead in the, in the maze for a, a short time. And while they were lying there, monsters looted their corpses, and we have characters that are missing essential weapons and armor. In fact, let me see, what do we have here? What do we have here in terms of gold point, gold pieces? 615? I think we can at least buy some leather armor for those that need it. Do you know what my problem was? I didn't equip the weapons that we bought. So they were barehanded fighting Murphy's Ghost. You know, with that in mind, that wasn't that bad. I have to say, that wasn't that, that really wasn't that bad. Alright. Well, so I don't feel so bad now. So let's go to the maze, equip the weapons. Yeah, oops, right? That's a big oops. That's a major rookie mistake right there. It's a mistake I shouldn't have made. Still, knowing that I had all those plus one weapons and plus one shield and all that, it's ridiculous. Let's get a shield for Frodette. She's got one now. He does not have armor. Let's get him some armor. Or she does not, I should say. I think once we get her armored up, we'll be good to go ahead and continue our, our trip into the maze. We'll heal up real quick before we go. Everybody's looking good enough to go now. Let's cure, rest up her uh, spell points real fast. And we'll dive right back into level three, where we left off the other night. So like I said, I think we have pretty much uh, mapped out the majority of the third level. I do want to take a peek down there and just see. Down to level two. Three priests. Should be level one priests. Should be a pretty easy fight. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're not going to give us too much trouble. Wow, combat goes so much smoother when you actually have swords and weapons. So we're doing the long and winding road down to level 3. Gives you time to think. And bump your head into the wall. There it is. So, let's do our stuff. We have a low Milwa, give us the light spell. If we're in Alita here, we'll cast a Duma pick. So we really did map. Wow, we did the whole level? I think I see a couple of spots, like around 5-6. Um, Five, five, a couple hallways that we did not walk down. 
but I really think we've um, we've mapped the whole thing. I want to see something. This is something that I missed the other day. I was looking at my old maps today, and I realized, look at what's popped up in the left-hand corner. Maybe you can't see it because um, of my camera, but it says, read mosaic. There's something written on the floor. The floor has a mosaic reading, turn around. The floor has a mosaic reading, turn around. So we missed all that last time. Almost every spot at an intersection on this level has some sort of mosaic on it, except for the ones that are trapped. This one says turn left. Now, look what happens. If I turn left, the shadows on the floor indicate a pit trap. Which I actually think we're going to spring simply because I really want to go down the stairs. What I want on the fourth level I think is actually accessible from the elevator if I remember right. And I don't remember what is down the, the stairs to the fourth level. But we're gonna find out. So we got some Vorpal Bunnies here. And Frodette died. Did you see that? She freaking died. I missed it. I wasn't paying attention. So, so much for exploration. I've got to go to town and bring her back. The pit trap killed her. An infuriating game. But I think that's part of the reason I love it so much. Oh, great. And the whole party's poisoned because I went ahead and opened. Oh no, it'll be okay. We, we ha have enough uh, healing power to make it back. That's no problem. It's just an annoyance more than anything. We'll do some of that healing right now, as a matter of fact. Heal up the ones that are weak. I do hate that I'm going to have to burn about 2,000 um, gold pieces to bring Frodet back. I don't even know if we have that much. It's brutal, I tell you. And the whole darn party is poisoned except for Bunalita there. It does get easier as you level up. In fact, I could cure that poison now. What am I thinking? Now only Shorty's poison.
All right, how much gold do we have? Not enough to bring Frodet back. 2,250 gold is going to be required to bring her back. So, do you remember our trick from the other day? If you don't, we're going to go ahead and use that trick right now. For the sake of time. Oh, that made me nervous. <laughs> so what we're doing is I'm making a bunch of characters. And the only reason I'm doing this is because every character... Look at these rolls. Wow. Every character starts with a hefty sum of gold. We're going to invite them to the party. We're going to go ahead and tell them we're communists and we're going to take their gold for the good of everybody. And then we're going to step into the dungeon and we're going to change our mind. And we're going to come back to town. So let's remove... Frodet, Merlin, and Shorty, Kyler. Let's add these guys. Now I want you to watch. I have 665 gold pieces. We're going to go to the maze. The reason we go to the maze is when you come back from the maze, everybody pulls their gold together. This is an old school cheat. Now we're up to 1300. So we're going to dismiss these guys. Say, hey, thanks for your help. Thanks for your gold. But we really don't need you anymore. We're going to make five more. And this is how you would cheat in the old days. Some people would do this for hours when they first start the game. But they wouldn't use it for a resurrection. Instead, they would make all this gold, and then they would buy the best gear at the store. So the first time they set foot in the maze, their characters were equipped with the very best stuff. I'm not quite that patient, because you can earn gold fairly quickly in the game. But like I said, for the sake of time in the stream, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to be more cautious, too. Oh, we still don't have enough. So one more round of it. One more round, and we'll be good. It's always fun to cheat the system a little bit. But it's like somebody said the other night, if it's in the game, it's not really cheating. Right? One more time. test that if I had all my old armor that would have never happened all right Kyler and Wilma I'm gonna put Wilma back in the front for a little while and somebody Merlin there needs to level up and I'm hoping during this level up that he learns a spell called Makanito, or Makanito, or however you want to pronounce it. And the reason I want him to learn that spell is because it's going to be very crucial to the encounter that I'm expecting us to get very soon. Let's go to the maze and see what he's got. So first things first, though, let's heal everybody. 
Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. All right. See, that's the kind of heels I'm talking about right there. That's what we want to see. Shorty's got some spells too. Alright, so let's take a look at Merlin here. There it is. Macanito. Now read the description for this spell. Kills all monsters in an encounter under 8th level by poisoning the air that they breathe. And the key word here is kills all monsters in an encounter that's not in a group that's the whole encounter so the last night if we had fought that group of ninjas this spell could potentially kill every single one of them all of them that's why this spell is so awesome and it's crucial because the fight that I think we're about to do not only is a large group of monsters, but it's a group of monsters that is exceptionally um, weak to that spell. So we saw that we cleared all of the third level. And instead of taking the stairs down to um, level four, this time, we are going to take the elevator. And the reason we're going to do that is because I happen to know from playing this game over and over that this is actually the spot we want to go to. And there's going to be lots of cool story elements that we're going to see here in just a few minutes. So remember, this dungeon is 10 levels deep, and we have explored the first three levels. So now we're going down to the fourth level. Taking the elevator down to floor four. Now, what we have here is a hallway. Let me first, uh, let's do a little mill wasp spell. Give us some light. So there's a sign on the wall. Private elevator, authorized users only. So we just took an elevator to this floor. I'm not interested in going down another elevator. So we're going to turn around, go through this door. Testing grounds control center. Authorized personnel only. Testing grounds. What's through here? Suddenly, a loud alarm bell can be heard. Then, the bell stopped. Stop, and are replaced by the sound of guardian monsters. The party gets the idea that they are in big trouble. So, at this point, where do we want to go? A friendly group of ogres. That was lucky. Treasure repository. Do we want to go in there? We triggered the alarm again. Monster allocation center. Hmm. That doesn't sound like a place we want to go, but in this case, it, it is where we want to go. And we're going to fight a huge battle here. 
Really, I've seen this bigger. But look at what we have here. A high ninja. This is trouble. Potential trouble. Except we are going to use this spell. This has worked for me in the past. Didn't work this time, though. Normally that kills almost everybody, and there is Wilma dead. Good lord, this Apple version is brutal. We're going to try that spell one more time. What level are these priests and this ninja? Alright, so with that in mind, let's do this. So that was a little bit more effective. So all we've got to deal with is this ninja, but he can one hit kill. So let's give him a blast. He killed Kyler. Good lord. So brutal. But look at that experience, though. This room is where I used to go to grind. But in the past, um, Nakanito would just wipe them all out. We received a potion and a ring and a rod. So Shorty can identify these items. Don't worry about Wilma and Kyler, because we are about to make a lot of gold. That is a deadly ring. Now what happens is if we wear this ring, it will kill you. But we don't want to wear it. Instead, we want to sell it. So we're going to skip this door. We're going to go through here. In this 10 by 10 room, you note various items, the remains of what might have been scrying glasses and amulets of summoning and other artifacts of control and knowledge. Unfortunately, they all seem to be destroyed beyond repair. As your party enters the room, the door slams shut behind you. Shortly after, it, grows a pale, it glows a pale blue and disappears. Then the door on the opposite side of the room begins to glow a bright orange, seeming to beckon the party forward. We got lucky with these friendly monsters. As the party enters the room, the door slams shut, glows bright orange, and disappears. Another door appears before you, a voice coming from no apparent direction can be heard, and it says, Congratulations, my loyal and worthy subjects. Today you have served me well, and truly proven yourself worthy of the quests you are now to undertake. Several years ago, an amulet was stolen from the treasury by an evil wizard who is purported to be in the dungeon immediately below where you stand now. This amulet has powers which we are now in dire need of. It is your quest to find this amulet and retrieve it from this wizard. In recognition of your great deed today, I give you a blue ribbon, which may be used to access the level transporter on this floor. Without it, the party would be unable to enter the room in which it lies. Go now and Godspeed on your quest. The party found a blue ribbon. So what happens here actually is these first four levels are the title of the game. These are the proving grounds of the Mad Overlord. Trevor is the name of the Mad Overlord, the overlord of the city. And these first four levels were his test. And we have now proven good enough to take on the actual quest, which is to track down Wardena, the evil wizard, on the 10th level, and return the amulet. Kill him, steal the amulet, return it back to the Mad Overlord. That blue ribbon lets us use the service elevator that we found to the south. 
Right now, though, we have some things to take care of. So we're going back to the first floor to sell some items and resurrect our characters. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've lost track of how many steps we've taken. There we go. So I guess you could say that this is where the game actually begins. So we're going to sell some stuff. We don't want this deadly ring because it will kill you if you wear it. But look at how much it's worth. 250,000 gold pieces. We are selling the deadly ring. And now we have more money than we'll ever need. So, I've been waiting for this moment to show everybody this. It's like my favorite part of the game, I'm sorry. In fact, we have so much money, let's just rest at the inn for the first time, right? Let's rest everybody up. I'm not even worried about Vim right now. Now, let's take that money and put it to good use. Let's buy some stuff. And you know, I want to, want to point something else out here, too. You notice now that I can buy a deadly ring for 500000 And the reason I can buy it is because we just sold it to the shopkeeper. So anything we sell him, he gets in his inventory. Now, of course, he only gives us half of the value. We sold it for 250000 he has it for 500000 So we're going to buy Brunelita some gloves. We're going to buy her this fancy breastplate. We're going to buy her this fancy shield. We don't have a better longsword right now. Shorty, what Shorty need here? Give Shorty this plus one armor. be good enough for Shorty. Throw debt. Get her a fancy shield. Fancy armor. Merlin will upgrade his staff. Never can have too many potions. Wilma. Wilma needs a breastplate. Wilma needs a shield. Wilma needs some chain mail. Let's see, flail versus mace. Mace is 2d3 plus 2d3. A flail is 1d7. Potentially could earn more. Plus 3 to hit. We'll give her a flail. Kyler, what does Kyler need? Copper gloves. Breastplate. Shield. A5, AC5. What's he got? Large breastplate. That was five. That was five. All right. So we have really outfitted everybody big time. Let's equip all this stuff. And this is where it gets fun, right? Equip the gloves. Equip the breastplate. Equip the shield. We have a rod of flame. I believe that if, if you use that item in battle, I believe it casts um, a fire spell. Alright, so we're rocking it now. Love that uh, deadly ring. Oops, I did not mean to click that. I apologize.
All right, let's sell the stuff we're not using. Oh, did I forget to equip that? Oh, I don't need that. So there we are. Ooh. Let's move the people around. So at this point, what I'd like to do is revisit that fight. I believe, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and drop a spoiler. The treasure repository that we saw a moment ago that we did not go in is a trap. There's no treasure in there. What is in there is a huge fight. And I think now that I'm, I'm actually going through this again, I think that is the fight where the Macanito spell comes in handy. It's not the, not the other way around. Because I think it's giants, or usually it is giants, and giants are spe specifically weak to error-based spells. So let's just see if I'm right. Let's go back to level four, and let's try this again. Like I said, it has been a long time. Exploding box, that's a new one. Through the door, through the door, down the hall. Testing grounds. There comes the loud noise. Gas dragons. We're so lucky with the friendly monsters. So it's wolves this time. It used to be a werewolves. It used to be giants. I could be wrong. It's been a long time. Let's try it and see. You're kidding me, I did not rest. Merlin. Ridiculous. Just a heads up, be careful of chest that teleport. Oh yes, there's a so on this level is the first time, I think the first time, you can encounter a chest with a teleport trap. And if you spring that trap, what it will do is it will teleport you to a portion of this maze that you cannot escape from unless you teleport out. Um, it's actually down, my memory serves me, it's either the lower right or the lower left hand corner of the maze. And it's just endless rooms. You go through one door, you go through another, and it's a loop that never stops. It's a big circle. What's it say? To a hell room. A bunch of people trapped there now, yes. Um, it is possible to escape from it um, if you have a teleport spell. And a lot of people say that if you get teleported there, then there will be a one-way door out. A hidden door. I've never encountered that personally. Um, the only time I've ever visited there is because I, I chose to for the sake of, of mapping. And of course I've not been there in this playthrough. Yeah, I have to re-level guys now to get the spell to do it. Yeah, that is a pain. That's a very nasty trap. <laughs> and there's no teleport door out. I spent three hours looking for it. Well, so if there is a door, it's going to be in the middle on the north corridor. 
because there's a hallway that touches that that uh, middle north room. All right, we got a shield and a mace. Let's see what we have. Let's give that to Shorty. Who's got the mace? We'll give that to Shorty. We're going to go see Shorty. And we're going to identify. Small shield, nothing special. Mace plus one. So let's take a closer look at that. So we've got an anointed mace that's one, 2d3. That's 2d4 plus one. It's a no-brainer to equip that. Somebody's poisoned. Wilma has a spell. We'll cure that. Latumophus. Oh, let's see. I know I looked it up, but it's not there. New crew dances on floor nine. So I have not... The, the playthrough in which I mapped this entire game was in 1999 or 98 very very long time ago so I couldn't tell you whether there is a hidden door there or not my maps don't indicate it but some people swear by it maybe it's version specific maybe the NES version was kind and will let you escape the, uh, the what a lot of people call the negative zone I don't recall ever escaping it myself outside of teleporting out. Yeah, but for this version I'm stuck till I get Malor, yes. Um, so this, this version of the game is the Apple version which was the most brutal. It's the Apple IIe version. So we're headed back to town. I want to recharge spell points. But I have to say I love it. I'm so glad to hear that. A game like this can be very hit or miss. Especially this is the first time you've played it, or your first, ex first exposure to it. It has very much the old school mentality. A lot of game in games today, there's a lot of hand holding, which you know I don't I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. But this game was designed to kill you. The permanent sense of delight, yes. I didn't go down far enough. Oh. I always stumble in the dark here. There it is. I played this on Apple when I was 10. Should tell you how old I am. Well, I played this on the Macintosh when I was 11 or 12 maybe and the Mac version came out in 84 and I played this in I think it was 1989 was my first exposure to this game and I've been a fan ever since I didn't get to play Wizardry again until the NES version came out and then I played Wizardry 1 and 2 on the NES and then I jumped right to Wizardry 4 six and seven but it wasn't until the release of the ultimate wizardry archives i think in 98 or 99 which was the first uh seven games in one collection that i was able to actually see wizardry three four or five 81 for me with an ultima stole me away ultima is fantastic so you can visit my website which is oldgamehermit.com 
and I have reviewed every Ultima game and then some on that site. Just go to search at the top, type in Ultima, and you can see reviews for all eight Ultima games. I've not reviewed... Um, no, I did. I did. I did Ultima Underworld 1 and 2. I sure did. Um, but I've not done some of the other ones, the, the Savage World or whatever that was called. I, I didn't touch those. Um, I like Ultima. Um, I even played... What, what's the game called? Shroud of the Avatar, which was supposed to be a modern um, spiritual successor to Ultima. Played that for a little while. Reviewed it as well. But it, to me, it just... It didn't capture the magic of those old games. And Richard Garriott does not seem interested in... Um, well, even if he was interested, I don't think he has the license to remaster them in any way. So there's that. Oh boy, we have a gas dragon here. Gas dragon. This guy, I am positive, is susceptible to this spell. Let's find out. That's the fight I was talking about. Him and the um, gas giants. But look at that EXP haul. That was fantastic. But this one we had no internet to look. Yep, there was no... What is this? Um, oh, a grave mist. Yeah, I had these strategy guides. In fact, I'll pull them out here in a second. Had the strategy guides for Wizardry 6, Bane of the Cosmic Forge, and Wizardry 7, Crusaders of the Dark Savant. Who's paralyzed? Wilma. Of course. The one person who had a spell to cure it is the one who gets paralyzed. Inspect the chest. Alright, so this chest, this is what he was talking about earlier. This chest is equipped with a teleport spell. Now, we can try to disarm it. But if we fail, we will be teleported, more than likely, into an area from which we cannot escape. So we are going to leave this chest alone. The reward is not worth the risk. I fought three Earth Giants. The experience was crazy. Just for those three, each member got 10k. Giants in this game award massive experience points. I don't know why. Gas giants are fantastic. And I thought they hung out in level 4, but I have yet to encounter one. I seem to remember gas giants being in the, um, the treasure uh, room there. They're around, I think. Just have to find. Yeah, I'm sure they are. So this level is a weird level because it's not... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? There it is. Um, this level is not... does not take up the whole map. It's actually very small compared to other levels in the game. Oops, I did not mean do that. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to level 4 and do one more little excursion around the treasure room because there is potentially some really good EXP there. I'd like to see one more level before we end the stream tonight. I see you got your ring. Oh yes, the deadly ring is the best treasure that you don't want because it sells for a massive amount. Yeah, I think before you joined we got the ring, we got the blue ribbon, so we're ready to dive. I mean, technically at this point, you can go straight down to level 9, hit, fall in the chute to level 10 and beat the game. But... 
I wouldn't challenge Warden at the very least until I have all my spells. The last spell, one of the last spells the mages uh, learn can kill him in one hit. If that's the route you want to take. Hey there, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. If you have any questions, just drop it in the chat. We'll be happy to answer. Um, what level is it? I can't remember what level you earn the spells. Um, it's not long from now, honestly. Because um, we're already... Let me. When I get done with this fight, I'll take a look. But I'll be honest, it's a very cheesy way to beat Wardna. Let's see. Let's take a peek. Oops, Merlin. So, five, six, seven. It's a level seven spell, and it's uh, Mahaman, which is uh, a boon spell, which when you cast the spell, um, you are given three options at random. One of the options is, what am I looking at here? Oh, one of the options is um, teleport enemies, which will just, kill the enemies instantly. It teleports them into stone, and you can use that to beat Ordnan in one hit. If you choose to do that. Really cheesy way to beat the game, but it does work. So Danny said earlier, um, huge spiders. Very creepy, the spiders. So, yeah, like I said, that's the cheesy way to beat him. You can use the same spell and uh, give yourselves um, an armor class buff, which makes it almost impossible for anybody to hit you. That's more of the um, proper way to do it. So they think, 96% mm, sure this is a trap list chest. Oh god, this is so dangerous. No trap, it was trapless. Got a scroll? Let's see what it is. Who has the scroll? We're going to give that to Shorty there. Why is Shorty in the front row? When did that happen? Oh, yes. When Wilma... So let's fix that. There we go. I have arachnophobia. So how do you deal with some of the games that you play if you have arachnophobia? Because I know what you like to play. I found a nice sword of nine called the Dragon Slayer. So the Dragon Slayer is a really awesome sword. Um, Wait till you find, and I don't know what this game is going to call it, um, but the Blade of Cuisinart. Wait till you find that. That is my favorite sword in the game. I'm fully satisfied killing them. <laughs> so, a cool story about the Blade Cuisinart. Um, of course, most people from the 1980s will know that the Cuisinart was an electric food processor that absolutely shredded food into little giblets, which is the joke, right? That's the whole joke after the name of the sword. Um, everybody knew that. They found the sword. They chuckled to themselves. Haha, -ha, Blade of Cuisinart. The Japanese audience, on the other hand, Cuisinart's a, an American brand. They had never heard of it. So when the game came out in Japan, um, they speculated. What, what, what is Cuisinart? What is that? So the Japanese manual told them that it was a blade forged by the ultimate blacksmith Cuisinart, a master of his craft. Stop. Good lord. Uh, 
I think it's always great when there's that lost in translation thing. All right. Let's see. Are we going to encounter these same guys again? Yes, we are. Are we going to get another deadly ring? I hope so. I can't remember. I can't remember. So we're going to pull that off again. Actually, back up. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. And we are going to... Man, Shorty doesn't have much, does he? Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, she would get another ring if you win. Kill the ninja first. That's what I thought. Alright. Put the ninja up front. Frodet, Merlin, Will. Where's Merlin? Back up. We're going to do a uh, Dalto on him. Ninja can instant kill somebody, remember that, so we have to be very careful. Alright, that took care of the ninja. So this little circuit here, this little loop, is where I used to go to level. And I would pretty much stay here until my characters were, I don't remember, level 13, level 14, something like that. I would just put on music, have a snack, and just run this circuit for two or three hours. And you can actually skip almost the entire game by doing that. Because level 5, 6, 7, 8, honestly, I don't think you even need to go there. You can skip those levels completely and go straight to level 9, which will take you to level 10. It's fun to explore those levels, though. There are some cute little Easter eggs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Turn. And that's our shortcut. Um, some of the levels, uh, when you map them, they spell out the initials of the game's creators. Which, you know, seeing that for the first time is a lot of fun. So wait, he'll still give me full price if I haven't identified it? That's not right. In the past, they would give you next... In other versions of the game I played, they would give you next to nothing for the item unless you identified it first. Which I feel like is the way it should be. Silly. I guess I gotta go to the maze to identify. So I'm probably going to stop the stream here very shortly simply because. We've been on now for a little over an hour. And there are other things that I have to attend to tonight, unfortunately. But I really wanted to show everybody level four, which is, um, what's going on here? Stop. Why can't I not identify that? Shorty's my bishop. Get 
give that to Merlin. Who's got the other spell? Who's got the other item? Nobody. So why is my bishop not giving the option to identify this time? Interesting. Let's level up Shorty. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Let's go back into the maze and see. I'm curious about that. Normally when I click the item, it'll give me the option to identify it. It's not doing that now. Why is that? Shorty is my bishop. Why? Why, why, why? So one thing I noticed right off is that this item already exists in Shorty's inventory. Shouldn't make a difference. But look, it did. So there's a bug. A bishop can identify, cannot identify an item that already exists in his inventory. So I'll send that to Digital Eclipse and let them know. I've never seen that bug before. So that seems to be specific to this version of the game. But years of bug hunting sort of clued me into that. That might have been the case. So at any rate, that's going to be it for tonight. This is where I'm going to stop. And I'm going to think about how we want to proceed. Um, because like I said, at this point in the game, assuming I grind a little bit more, unlock the spells I want, maybe make a couple class changes, um, we're ready to go down to the ninth level at that point and skip level five six seven and eight um or we could proceed and just map them for fun right um the only problem with that is the more time you spend in some of those lower levels um the bigger the risk right of, of losing the party um and for the sake of the stream i want to try to avoid that because i want people to see what the game's all about um, and level 9 and 10, that's where all the fun is. That's where the good treasure is, right? That's where the cool encounters are. Um, so I'm going to spend the rest of the night and the day tomorrow thinking about how we want to proceed with the stream. Because my previous wizardry uh, game, when we played a Labyrinth of Lost Souls, we mapped every single square of all three labyrinths. It was exhausting. But we did it. Um... But this is a game that's 40 years old, too. We don't have to do that with this game. Um, but we'll think about it. And I'll be back tomorrow around the same time. And we'll see where we go from there. But thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. It's always fun to, uh, to chat and show this game off to people who are curious about what it's about. So have a good evening. And I will see everybody tomorrow.